This is Harley Hartwell, and you're listening to the Case Closed Podcast. I would love to introduce our special guest today, Kevin M. Connolly, voice of Harley Hartwell. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great, guys. Thanks for having me on. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Um, the community definitely has a huge response to you being here. Um, if you could, please, sir, uh, could you talk about your involvement with Case Close, kind of how you got started with the project, and your thoughts on getting cast as Harley Hartwell? Um, absolutely. First of all, again, thank you for having me. It's it's it's, uh, it's definitely a, a, a great feeling to be uh, to be here with you guys. And uh, I love Case Closed. It was a great show. Um, the way I started was a very uh, uh, roundabout way. Uh, I had finished grad school at UCLA, and I became uh, interested in voiceover work when I was there, and moved back to San Antonio to work for a little bit, and then moved to Dallas. Uh, mainly because uh, I wanted to advance my career, and it worked out that um, my dad's best friend was in an office building with a voice actor by the name of Bob Magruder, who was very generous with his time and, and met with me to talk about the voiceover world. You know, at the time, it was a very difficult voiceover world to get into, and uh, he took me out to lunch, and we talked about his career and the types of voiceover work and, and yada, yada, yada. And he happened to mention that he did a one-day workshop in Houston with a friend of his on voiceover. So I moved to Dallas. I got cast in a theater show, and I was doing a show. And uh, I thought, well, you know what? I'll take a day. I'll drive to Houston. I got some friends there. I'll take the workshop, see my friends. So I emailed him, and he said, Kevin, I've got a, I've got a workshop in Dallas in two weeks. Give me 100 bucks, and you're in. I was like, all right. Sent off my check. Now, in that time... <clears throat> I uh, had lunch with a friend of mine, an old friend of mine from the Children's Theater, and we were talking about the voiceover world and how we both kind of wanted to get into it, and then we'd help each other out. Two days later, she calls me, and she says, Kevin, I found this company called Funimation, and I think they do English dubs on Japanese cartoons. I was like, well, that's interesting. So I called him up, and I said, hey, I'm an actor, and I'm just curious. Do you guys do the English dubs or subtitles or, you know, what's what's going on here? And they said, well, we do the English dubs, and send us a demo, and we'll put you on the audition list. And I said, great. And I hung up thinking, I have no idea what goes on a demo. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so. I go to the workshop and it's like uh, it's like high school. You know, we're introducing ourselves and I say, my name's Kevin. Um, I've studied theater. I've got a B.A. in theater and a master's in acting, but I don't know anything about the voiceover world. And that's why I'm here. And then about two or three seats down, this gentleman says, hi, my name is Mike McFarland. Uh, for the last five years, I've been a writer, actor, producer and director in uh, Funimation doing uh, uh, Japanese cartoons. And I'm looking to branch out into other areas. So in my head, I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, this is the guy I need to talk to. But how do I do it and not look like I'm flirting with him? <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, so so all morning, you know, we're reading different kinds of copy and, you know, we're doing commercials and promos and industrials and all this stuff. And then we have a lunch break and we go off and uh, we come back from lunch and I'm sitting out front because Bob isn't back yet to unlock the door. And I'm reading a book and I hear this voice say, so you're from San Antonio. And I look up and it's Mike. And I'm saying, yeah, you know, I'm from San Antonio. I'm, you know, doing some theater here and trying to learn about, you know, VO and and uh, trying to be nonchalant, right? So I'm like, so you work for that? Was it Fun Times or Funimate or something like that? And he says Funimation. I said, yeah, yeah. I just I give him a call and I'm trying to learn what to put on the demo because I want to be put on the audition list. And he kind of rolled his eyes a little bit at that. And he's like, oh, the audition list. And I'm like, well, what do you mean by that? And he says the audition list is a two year wait. And I'm like, well, that's plenty of time to put together a demo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a very, very long wait uh, at Funimation. When I was there uh, and I was directing for a little bit, um, they have 300 on-call actors already, you know. So it's very rare that they, you know, have time to seek out new people because they're working with who they have. Anyway, he said, look, I'm going to save you a couple steps. Give me your contact info and I'll bring you in for something. And I said, great. 
So a couple weeks goes by and I, I don't hear from him. So I found his I found his email and I just sent him a, a little note saying, hey, you know, we met at the voiceover workshop. Um, you know, uh, I, I know you must be really busy, but I would love to talk about you know, ADR, which is the process, uh, automatic dialogue replacement, because it wasn't touched upon a lot in class because um, it's a very specific niche of voiceover work that really is, you know, it's, that's it, voiceover in general is hard to get into, but doing ADR is even more difficult to get into. And uh, he was very kind. He said, Kevin, uh, definitely I still want to bring you in. I just uh, I'll have something in the next week or two. And then about three days later, I get the phone call from Funimation saying Mike wants to bring you in for an hour. And the first show I did was Case Closed. And it was a, a character named Steve Jacobus. And I was ridiculously nervous because uh, I'd never done this before. And Mike was really generous. I think it was about maybe 15 lines of dialogue, you know, which now after you know, years of finally figuring it out, I can do probably about, you know, 20 minutes. But at the time, it took an hour and a half and there was rewriting and I was just so nervous. I'm like saying, don't pay me. You know, I suck. Wow. wow. <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, you know, I, I remember driving away thinking, well, that was a nice experience and I'll never do it again. <laughs> But uh, uh, about about a week later, not about two weeks later after that, they called me in again. And uh, just like it was like football player number two or something like that. Just a little, you know, some some background characters. And we finished that up. And then Mike says, I says, OK, I want you to audition uh, for a character we have coming up called Harley Hartwell. And he said, he's he's a teenager. He's kind of the counterpart to Conan. And, he, you know, later on he figures out who Conan is. But, you know, he comes in sometimes and has these detective adventures. And, you know, I'd like you to read for him. I said, great. So I go in the booth. And uh, uh, the way you audition usually is that, you know, uh, there's a page with a picture of the character. And then about 10 or 12 lines of dialogue, you know, pulled from different scenes. And the director will tell you, okay, so this is a scene where you're angry. So you deliver it angry. This is a scene where you're happy. You know, read it happy. So we did all that, and we played with the voice a little bit, a little higher range. And then, then he asked me to do something that I later found out is not normal in an audition. Is he says, okay, let's record the picture now. I'm like, okay. So we go to a different booth, and uh, just like two or three lines of dialogue of Harley. And I walk out, and I'm like, okay, great. We'll see if I get it or not. And then uh, about two weeks later, I get a call saying, we need to bring you in for like six hours. Wow. I'm like, oh, wow, what, what, what is this for? And so, um, but I'm working with a different director. I'm working with a guy named Chris Kazin, uh, uh, who's a fantastic director and actor. And he's actually out here now in L.A. and we're, we're hanging out a lot. He's a cool guy. So I go in and I meet with him. And he says, so, yeah, um, looks like you're Harley. I'm like, Fantastic. You know, um, so, you know, and uh, we just chit chat a little bit, you know, my acting experience. And I said, you know, I'm still learning the process. So, you know, patience is greatly appreciated. And then this is where it gets a little sticky. And this was a, a moment. This, this was the week that I thought I would never, ever work in anime again. <clears throat> oh, okay. So what had happened is that this was a two parter. OK. And we were scheduled to record Monday and Tuesday. The next day they call me and say, We're, you're going to do another two-parter with Mike starting Thursday and recording to Friday. So I'm doing four episodes in a week here. I'm very excited. Now, where I take responsibility for beginning this little, uh, 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 I don't want to say fiasco, but it's a fiasco, um, is I didn't ask to listen to my audition, which I should have done. Because it had been, been a couple of weeks and I didn't, you know, it, the audition was so fast and getting in the booth and recording and I'm out the door, you know, which is kind of how it is. You know, you go in, do your lines, you leave. So uh, Chris and I mess around with the voice a little bit, you know, and I'm, I'm and so we, we settle on a voice. But in my in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, you know what? I think I was a little higher in tone, you know, trying to get more of a teenager voice. And uh, but, you know, Chris is a director and I'm like, OK, we're going to go with it. But it's kind of nagging me the whole time. Because uh, I remember Mike saying, Kevin, a little higher tone because he's younger. I'm like, okay. So we record all day, Monday, and then we start recording Tuesday. And then about halfway through the day, uh, Mike comes in, and I can see them, Mike and Chris, like, you know, they're joking around, looking at me, pointing and laughing and all this stuff. <laughs> and uh, we take a break, and Chris says, uh, Kevin, go pop over to Mike. He needs to grab one little thing of Harley uh, 
for you real quick, and then we'll come back and we'll finish up. So I go over into the other booth, and I get in, and I do the line in the voice I've been doing for the, you know, since yesterday, since the Monday, the day before. And the first thing Mike says is, Kevin, Kevin, no, no, it's too low. Remember, he's a teenager. Got to make, make it a higher tone. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh. We've just recorded all this stuff in the wrong voice. <laughs> For hours me. and hours, I'm assuming. For hours. <sighs> yeah, we did six hours the day before, we, you know, Monday, and then we got like four or five, you know, Tuesday to finish out the episodes and then take a day out, day, out, day off and then come back, you know, Thursday, Friday. And I'm thinking, oh, no. So I do the higher voice and it, that's what then that was the voice I remembered in the audition. I'm like, oh, I got to tell Chris right away. But I'm too scared, you know, because, again, I'm, I'm brand new still. I have no idea what I'm doing. So I go to lunch. I'm just thinking, how do I get myself out of this mess? Um, so I go back and I go to Chris. I said, Chris, Mike just had me do the voice higher, which I think was closer to the audition. And Chris was like, well, you know, that may have been the audition, but I liked what you're doing here. So, you know, we should probably keep going with this and then he'll just have to adjust um, or, you know, or will adjust, you know, you know, to what you're doing now. I'm thinking, okay, you know, you guys are the boss. So that Thursday, my day job was working for a jewelry company and we we were going to have an on-site sale somewhere. And I was going to go in later that afternoon to start working with Mike. Well, the night before, uh, Wednesday night, I get a call about 10 o'clock from the uh, talent coordinator, Tara. And she says, Kevin, is there any way you can come in at 9 a.m. on Thursday? And I talked to my boss, who is he's an actor himself. He said, Kevin, go do it. So I go in thinking I'm going to be working with Mike on the new on the second two parter. Right. So I go in to the studio at 9 a.m. and I knock on the door for Mike's studio and the door kind of just opens up all, you know, horror movie style. It's all black inside. I'm like, what is going on? There's nobody here. So I go around and there's Chris in, in the studio he's assigned to. I say, hey, Chris, uh, do you know where Mike is? I'm supposed to be starting. I thought, you know, I'm I'm a little late. And he looks at me and says, Kevin, actually, you're with me today. Like, oh. He says, when you auditioned, did you record the picture? And I was like, yeah, you know, I read the audition. And then Mike said, great, let's record the picture like these two lines. So what had happened was that Mike, right in that moment, had decided to cast me as Harley. What I recorded to picture was a trailer that had already gone out. So when the sound engineers got the two episodes I did with Chris, they immediately said, this is the wrong voice. It doesn't match what was on the trailer that just went out. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about, too. I think you're talking about the DVD trailer, which had exactly. the character on the front. Yeah, when they were doing the singles DVDs. Yeah. Yep. Okay, wow. So that Thursday, we had to re-record because the episode had to be to Cartoon Network Friday. (laughs) So from 9 a.m. to about 8.30 that night, Thursday, Chris and I had to, we we, we re-recorded every single uh, single line of Harley's. And it was was easy, sort of, because all all we did was he would play the line that I had recorded because we'd already fixed the timing. We'd already fixed any dialogue issues. You know, sometimes if a sentence is too long or too short, everything was fixed. So it literally was just all day of hearing the line and then repeating it in the higher tone to match Harley's voice that had been already sent out. And we got it done. I'm sure the, the engine, the mixing engineers were up all night having to mix it, uh, to have it FedEx to Cartoon Network Friday. And I remember driving away saying, well, now I'll never be cast again. <laughs> They'll never use me. But thankfully they did. But that was that was the most torturous time period in my life, I think, when it came to starting out in my anime career. There's wow. a long winded story of it. <laughs> wow. So I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about the first two part episode where Harley does make an appearance, make his first appearance, as well as the there's two episodes later where he finds out that. Uh, Conan is actually Jimmy. So you recorded right. those four episodes during that span, I, I'm assuming? I th- yeah, in that one week, yeah. Wow. That's well, actually, crazy. that changed because then we had to go back to, uh, I think it was the following week that I worked with Mike to record. And uh, and I kept apologizing up and down, and they said, no, Kevin, it's kind of, you know, it, it, it just fell through the cracks, you know. We just we didn't pull the audition. We didn't share it. And it was just, you know, it just happened. So, But I, I will say, so 
that does also mean that I got paid twice for doing the same thing. <laughs> well, <laughs> as long as as long as it's and it's long all, as it was all hourly, I'm assuming. So. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, it is. So, yeah. I mean, as long as you got paid, I mean that I wouldn't I wouldn't have minded either. But exactly. Then on the other hand, you know, um, you know, having that happen is kind of it kind of gets you nervous. It's like, oh, I was uh, terrified. Yeah. I was, I mean, every single line, I, I think, or every other line, I'd say, is the tone right? Is the voice right? You know, not trusting myself at all. But uh, we, we got through it and uh, uh, good times. <laughs> See, I always, I always thought they might make, and I didn't, I didn't know. I just assumed maybe they would have you all listen to it, what it sounds like in Japanese, and then let you kind of take it from there with the director. I didn't know that they just kind of, they were like, okay, well, kind of you need to just do this pitch and start this way, you know, like with a picture well, it, of the character. It, it all depends on the show and the director. Um, okay. And then the producers, you know, sometimes the producers, I, you know, I've never been asked, I, well, there was one show, and I can't remember the title of it, to be honest with you, where the Japanese producers did ask for uh, as close to uh, a voice match as we could to the original Japanese actors. Um but ultimately, you know, my, my job isn't to mimic someone else. It, it's, it's me creating a character, uh, you know, something fresh. Um, because that's what, that, you know, that's what the Japanese actors do. I mean, yeah. you know, you know, so they, they approach, you know, they're approaching because, you know, sometimes anime is already animated for them as well. They just have to fit it in. So, I mean, and that's that's what I love about acting is, is for me is, you know, I, I, I'm not here to mimic someone else unless it pays really, really well and I can do it really, really well. But um, it's uh, it's looking at the character and, and finding the unique voice that I have that might fit that character. So, um and again, I think, you know, it depends on the producers and directors, but uh, we had a lot of freedom uh, to really explore, uh, you know, how we wanted to approach each character. So uh, I guess it's safe to say that was your favorite to record or not your favorite to record? <laughs> um, it, it was my – it well, it depends if, if we're talking about my wallet. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, it was, it was a lot of you – no, know, it, it was also a, a great – that was my – you know, that was my education in how to do ADR. And, and thankfully both uh, Chris – and Mike and all the directors I've worked with, I, I try to learn from, and they were very, very patient with me, and I'm always very grateful for that. <clears throat> and so you yeah. recorded those four episodes, and then um, yeah. there's there's two more. My my personal favorite two that your character appears in is the License to Die uh, two part special. That's in season five. That's one of the later episodes in season five. Mm. Um, was that recorded later on or? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it takes uh, it, it takes about a <clears throat> I don't know, about a week per episode. So it must have been recorded. Yeah, because I was that's also when I started working on um, like Full Metal Alchemist and and other things. You know, it's a it's a, it's a bit of a slow process, um, you know, because you're scheduling actors. And, and uh, I mean, you know, we're talking 10 years ago, so I'm sure there must have been a couple of months in between. Yeah. Uh, to, to, to be called in for Harley again. Yeah, you know, and that, and, but, that would make sense. <clears throat> that would make sense. Yeah. Um, as far yeah. as how they released, because uh, they, because uh, as far as what they did with the seasons, most, you get the first 78, 79 episodes for us came out around between 04 and 05, and then there was a real, there was a delay, and we didn't get seasons four and five till 2008. Um, so yeah. I, I, but I'm assuming you guys had probably recorded around 05 because I, that's what i've heard is is as far as recording even seasons four and five that was done maybe a couple of years before it um, may have yeah that's what it i've may heard have. i mean yeah you know. yeah I, I don't know all the release schedules and how everything you know sometimes it gets such a blur as, as actors we're not really privy to a lot oh yeah you know we're, we're, we're kind I, of the, we're, we're, we're yeah. cattle we go in say what we're supposed to say and then get kicked out <laughs> yeah and that, and but, that, uh, and that makes sense yeah. 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 And, Though I may, I may have to call upon you guys because I'm trying to build a collection of uh, the stuff I've done. I've got a bunch of the Full Metal Alchemist, but if you got volume numbers for where Harley appears, I'd love to get those. Actually. Yeah. The, <laughs> so. Um, actually, I can read off actually all the episodes. I've got the DVDs actually sitting in front of me. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. The uh, episode Harley appears in. It's the first two part you're talking about. Are referring to is the no immunity for the diplomat. That's episode. Yes, that, that's my that's yes. my favorite, honestly. And, and those were, by the way, the last two episodes to air on Adult Swim. Um, yep. 
Really? The last, yeah, those were the yeah. last two. Those they never last, wow. they never aired any other episodes after that on Adult huh. Swim. Yeah, they just went into <laughs> Yeah, I know. Because after that was um, after that were th- where things were really getting interesting with the series, but you know, yeah. Cartoon Network, I guess, was like uh, the okay. ratings aren't that good, so we're just gonna. I kind of remember that now. That now that you mentioned, that, I remember there was a little bit of talk about that at the studio. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Any, uh... I just you know they were just talking about you know that they're still recording, but that it wasn't going to be airing and. And I, I think, too, you know, uh, because that was also because uh, that was in May. And I remember in November we started recording Full Metal Alchemist. And I know that was that was the big that was the big project everyone was excited about at the time. So I'm, I'm guessing a lot of focus went to that. Yeah. As well. And again, I don't know, you know, yeah. I don't know how many, you know, what episodes have been licensed by Funimation, you know, or whatever. So I think there's a was... lot of a lot of cogs in the machine. Yeah. yeah. I think they licensed like 130. Yeah, it's 130. Oh, wow. um, but it's really it's really 123 when you look at it because they did take some episodes that were one hours, like a one hour special in Japanese, and just kind of split it up into two episodes, which I think oh, works, okay. especially when you're yeah. when you're when every other episode is you know 25 minutes long. You yeah. know, right. Exactly. You just run into a one hour special <laughs> and it look normal. Um, <laughs> yeah. And just in case you're wondering, the exact episodes where you first appear are episodes 49 and 50. 49 and 50, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. In, that's in season two. And then in season three, this might take a minute to find. Footsteps of the Hero. Yes, Footsteps of the Hero, episode 59 and 60. Is that the Sherlock Holmes party one? Yes. Yes. That's okay. I remember that one very specifically for some reason. That was a fun one. Actually, there was a movie he was in. Yes, I yeah, was going to ask you three. about that. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the uh, Last Wizard of the Century. That was the yes, movie. yes, yes. That was the last thing I think I recorded as Harley. Yes, and I, I heard y'all actually recorded that around the same time uh, it was released. Which, I, I'm, if I'm going back correctly, I think it was 2010. Probably when it came out. I don't know exactly when y'all recorded. Um, but that would it was sense. a lot earlier than that because I had already moved back to Texas by then. No, no, I was at, no, I was actually out here. Really? I moved to, I moved to LA in 2009, so I must have recorded that either 2007 or early 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 2008 because I moved okay. back to San Antonio in April of 08. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that would okay, that would make some sense. But it, yeah. I guess it had been at that point, I guess it had been about maybe a couple of years since you had visited that character and Yeah. Uh, oh know, yeah. Talk about maybe picking that character uh, back up a little bit. You know what's what's great because uh, I had an experience with Fury uh, like this too. What's you know, uh, I think cause I think Caitlin Glass directed that if I recall correctly, um, or maybe she didn't. I can't. Well, I, anyway, uh, what you know, they they would always pull uh, little tidbits of lines, you know, just for the voice, but. The lines that they picked really, you know, what I love about Harley is he's kind of got, you know, he's he's cocky sure of himself, you know, and I think he loves knowing the fact that he knows who Conan really is um, and sharing his adventures. And so, you know, they, they getting the dialogue and just saying, you know, just some of the, some of the attitude that he has that really kind of just snaps the character back into me a lot, which uh, and it was it was a lot of fun. It was, it, you know, he's he's. He he's definitely a, a fun guy to play, um, and it was a lot of fun to get back into him for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, Harley plays a huge role, uh, obviously, in the Last Wizard of the Century. So it's yeah, you know, it's it was. I'm sure it was even more dialogue, maybe even more recording time. I'm sure than even it, before, probably. It was yeah, and in fact, I remember I because I had to call upon my training. There's a paragraph. And I'm, sure, I'm pretty just like talks and talks and talks and talks and talk and just doesn't shut up. <laughs> and I remember, uh, yeah, because it was Caitlin directing, at least that day she was directing me. And uh, I had to p- call upon my Shakespearean breathing training because, you know, usually if it's a big paragraph and let's say I get the first bit right, you know, that matches the flaps and the, you know, the, the acting is there, but the technical side is there. Uh, usually you can kind of punch in you know, uh, after to fill in whatever tidbits at the end. But there were two weird breaks in the lip flaps. And I remember I had to do this whole thing in one take. And it took us probably a good hour and a half, maybe even two hours just to get right. 
because uh, we tried breaking it up and it just I you know I couldn't get a natural flow sounding it just sounded you know you could hear where the break happened and got disjointed so I remember just having to say okay Shakespeare time let's get all this breath in here and let's just do it and uh, finally nailed it yeah yeah that was a challenging one 